Um, Parshat Kitisa, uh, year 5780. Uh, and she should go Mikhail Khail Beganidin. So Parshat Kitisa, it starts off, but the, the main theme of the Parsha is going to be about the Heta Egel, how the Jewish people built the golden calf. Right? And the people were dancing around it and whatnot. Um, but in the beginning of the parasha, the parasha starts off. We read this when Chodesh Adar just started. We read about giving Mahatita Shekel. Right? We gave half a shekel. So I'm, I think I'm telling it to Esther, everybody, I wasn't here, but I know all the shuls, they, they give Zechel a Mahatita Shekel. Right? In the Benamikdash times, in the Mishkan, they would give half a shekel, everybody would give. Now the Gemara in Shekalim says, you know why they give a Hatsi Shekel? Because they sinned with the golden calf, the Heta Egel, at half day. At noon. At Hatsot, during half the day, when that six hours are ready through the day. That's the time that they made the sin. So that's why they pay with Hatsi Shekel. Hatsot, half a day. Hatsi Shekel, half a coin. Half a so everybody asks, what's the connection between half a day and half a coin? You, know, what's the, you say they sinned at half a day, so give a half a coin. So Rav Schwab, the Chatzidik de Bracha, says something amazing. He says, you know why half a coin? You know what half a day resembles? It resembles a person. Every person is half good and half bad. He has a Yitzhahara and a Yitzhahatov. He says, a person can be compared to the moon. Right? The moon, the side that's facing the sun shines and the side that's away from the sun is always dark. Right? It's only the side that's that's being reflected from the sun has light. The other side of the moon is dark. The Torah requires that we give Hatsi Shekel, half a coin, for the half, for the half that is problematic, for the Yetzirah half. For the Yetzirah Tov half, you don't need to give Hatsi Shekel. That, that half is good. You only need Kapara for the half of man that is a Yetzirah. The Midrash teaches us something very important. Is that our nature is... Our nature is... That a person can go from being a tzaddik to being a rasha in an instant. Because a person is made up half and half. It says, look, at the Heta Ega, we know that when the Jews got... The Sayyid Ibrahim, right? They became like Adam Arishon before the hit. No more dying. Everybody was healed. Everything was better. Up until the point they did the sin of the ego, they were still like that. The minute they did the sin of the ego, everything went gone. So that means that they transformed from the most righteous people to the person who made the worst sin. That sin that we still get punished till today. Every punishment that comes down to this world involves in it the Heta Ego, the punishment for the Heta Ego. And all that happened in an instant. Rav, my Rosh Yeshiva, Rav Reisman, I remember, um, this was probably going back in the year 2011. I was in his, uh, he, gives, he gives every Friday, he gives a Chumash Shmuz. He gives a Parsha Shmuz on the Parsha in Yeshiva on the fourth floor. So I was there, I used to go every Friday. I tried to always go to the Parsha Shmuz. And uh, he, he, he said, what, what was the lesson? What is the lesson to learn from the Heta Ego? What is it? At the Heta Egel, that a person really has to come out with. And he says, I believe he said it based on the, um, there was this, uh, 
this uh, Jewish psychologist in, in, in Muncie, I believe his name was uh, Yaakov Greenwald, you know, that's the name that he mentioned, and um, he was a student of uh, the Stipler Garden, we saw Yaakov Kanevsky, and he said, you know what the real lesson is? He says, what happened? How did they come to that sin? How did the Jews, who we just mentioned, there were like Adam Arishon before the sin, they, they accepted the Torah, they saw Hashem. They heard Hashem. They died, they came back, they died, they came back, right? Oh, they got crowns on their head, not seven Shema. How did they sin so badly to say, Ela Elokecha, Ela Elohecha Yisrael, to say this is, the golden calf is your God. How could they do that? They saw Hashem, they heard Hashem. They got the Torah. And he explained as follows. He said, the Jews had a leader, Moshe Rabbeinu. And Moshe Rabbeinu said, I'm going to come back on this day, at the sixth hour. And the Jewish people were counting down to that time. And the time came and Moshe Rabbeinu wasn't there. So what did people do? What people tend to do whenever they don't know what to do, they panicked. They panicked. And because when you're panicking, you don't know what to do, you're in a state of Bahala, a state of confusion. Like today, Corona. Ah, there you go. We're about to start it. That's right. They don't know what to do. They're in a state of confusion. They make Avodah They make Hayta Ego. Because they trying to come to a solution, an answer, when there's no answer. What they should have done was, Moshe Rabbeinu didn't come. Oyvei, this is a problem. All right, let's talk to the rabbis. Let's sleep. And tomorrow we'll figure out a solution. No, instead, let's figure out right now. Let's do something right now. Right, people, coronavirus. Everybody's running to the store. I have to buy all the chickens from Cold Save. Nothing left. Not, <laughs> nothing there. I will, uh, buy it for Nothing. Eishum Nava. Alach to the Franken. And Lou. I call my wife. She's in Queens. I tell her, listen, go to. Go buy something. Take for Shabbat. Yeah. People don't know what to do, so they're going to the store. They're buying out the store. What? what? <laughs> it's a good diet, right? Good. <laughs> so I told my wife. I said we we have enough food at home for two for two months. She's like, I don't know. I said, yeah, if we diet, we'll be fine. We'll be able to last three months even on the food we have at home. But panicking is people's response and when they don't know what to do. And knowledge is power. When a person knows what to do, he's very strong. So I'm sure people are listening to the Rabbanim and they've heard what to do. Or Reisman, Rosh Hashiva, he says, everybody's so worried about this virus, but they said they forget that if you really want to be protected, when you're learning Torah, when you, man, he says you want to be protected when you're learning Torah and when you're praying in the shul. When you that, don't talk about it. You, you suppose Torah is what really going to protect you. Musar is going to protect you. These things are going to protect you. And instead, people are in the shul talking about the virus. It's not the time to talk about the virus. In the shul, you're talking to God. Hashem, please help me. Please save me. I'm learning Torah. Now is the time to, to, to only... Okay, before the class, after the class, whatever. But uh, during the class, the person shouldn't go off tangent and go off like that. The person has to know he's learning Torah. The person has to stick and not get panicked. What you have to do? What you have to know? Uh, and, and that way a person lives correctly. If the Jews would have just said, let me just see what Moshe been. Where is he? What's going on? Okay, he didn't come. Let's figure this out. Let's think about it. Let's stop and think Let's gather our thoughts. Let's go to Aaron. Let's go to Hur. Let's ask them what to do, what to do this. No, they want to take matters in their right hand right away. Jump into the fight, throw the medal, throw this, throw that. That's with a half a head. You're not thinking completely. You're not shalom in your head. You're not complete. It's like give a hatsi shekel for the half that's missing. Rav Moshe al he says, Mahatita Shekel in the beginning of the parasha, Cheta Egel in the end of the parasha. He says, you know, the Gemara says, 
a man without a wife is not considered a complete man. He's not a full man. He's, not, he's a half. The male is only half of a human being when he's not with his female partner. And he says, look at the Heta Ego. The woman did not participate. We all know that the woman said, don't take our jewelry, don't take anything. Moshe is going to come. You just got to wait. All right? They weren't participating. When the man acted with half a soul, with half a heart, with half a knowledge, because he's only half without his wife, mm-hmm. he made all Balagan. It's very important that the person has a complete thought. The Chachamim here, Rav Moshe Ashach is telling us that a complete thought and a complete knowledge is when both the male and the female together come to a decision and come to a conclusion. It's a challenging thing because men and women think very different. A husband and wife can be married for how many years and they still don't see eye to eye. It's, just, it's, it's, it's natural. Right? But they have to work together to come up with the best ideas and the best uh, compromises to help them and help their families. The person goes with this, he lives the right way. Uh, you know, from, the, from the school, they sent an email today from my girl's school saying, please don't talk to your daughters about this uh, coronavirus. Uh, it's, it's because the parents are very excited. The kids don't understand it completely and they get more confused. Yeah, yeah, tell them what you have to tell them. Tell them, wash your hands, don't touch dirty things, don't go to extra people, someone's coughing, stay away. You tell them those things. But you have, the people are telling them all sorts of nonsense. Yeah. Hey, what, what the kids, kids don't even understand half the things you tell them. They're six, seven, eight, nine, 10, 11, 12. What do they understand already? They don't have a say hi like, uh, like an adult. And then they see the adult panicking, they panic more. Uh, complete confusion. Oh, but oh, oh. everybody's talking. They're closing, this closing. Someone says, oh, I heard this rumor, I heard that rumor. It's a lot of things going on. And, and the parasha is exactly this parasha. Kitisa. Uh, people got confused. And people got confused. And people made mistakes. I heard the, that Musar, learning Musar, and going to shul three times a day, a woman lighting candles early, all these things are really going to help a person through any challenge. You know, I, I, I want to mention what my, my Shishiv Reisman Ra, Shlita always brings down in the name of Pam Palms, he says, people are always looking for segulot. People are always looking for a segula. What can I do to help myself? And Rav Pam always said, that uh, if you ever hear of a segula, if you read the, something backwards, you read it a thousand times, you jump on your feet up and down, you blow shofar a million times, he says those type of segulot are not for us. The segula that we have to look for, stuff to protect us, are mitzvot. Mitzvot that we already have, that we need to improve on. Tefillah, we all have the mitzvah tefillah. We get lazy, we don't go to shul, we, we get busy, we don't go to shul, we don't pray with kavanah, all these type of things we don't do. This is the things that are segula. Segula is mitzvot that we already have. You have to work on them and do them properly. And when you do them properly, that's your segula. That's going to be the ones that protect you. We have a mitzvah of learning Torah. We have a mitzvah of becoming a better person. You work on those. And that's going to be a segula that will, that will protect us. If the Jews, by the Heta Ego, would have said, let us see, let us talk to Arabanim, what they were supposed to do. Let us pray to Hashem, Moshe Be'on didn't come. Let's pray to Hashem, please. Instead of getting in the state of confusion and acting hastily and, 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 and confusion and then creating a Heta, creating an Ego, that is the worst thing a person can do. All right, so that's on the... Uh, and the Haita Ega or Hatsita Shekel and the connection between those two. Um, I want to just uh, move on to another aspect of this week's parasha. So the parasha tells us in Lamed Aleph Yun Hayat, the parasha talks about Moshe Rabbeinu is getting. The Luhot, right? 
So it says over here, V'yitain el Moshe kechalato l'dabir ito. V'hai sinai shnei luchot ha'edut luchot evin ketuvim v'etzva Elohim. It says that Hashem gave to Moshe, when he finished speaking with him, the two luchot. The word kechalato is spelled without a vav. Why? The Rashi tells us from the Midrash Tan Chuma, because the Torah was given as a gift, kechalato, like a kala. It was given like a, like a, a bride is given to her husband, right? The parents give the bride to the, to the groom. Hashem gave the Torah to Moshe. The Midrash Rabbah explains what happened. Rab, Rabbi Avahu said, Moshe Rabbeinu was in Shemaim for 40, for 40 days. Every day he would learn Torah. And what would happen after he learned Torah? Day one he learned Torah. What happened after? He forgot it. Every day in and out Moshe Rabbeinu learned Torah. And every day he forgot it. You, you thought we have this problem, right? And we, thought we learned Torah and we forget it. Midrash said Moshe Rabbeinu. Every day learned Torah and every day forgot it. What happened? At the end of 40 days, HaKadosh Baruch Hu told him, Here Moshe is the Torah, the Matana. Here is for you a gift, the Torah. You worked so hard to understand it and you didn't understand it. Now don't worry, I'll give you a download. It's, uh, it's in you. It's already there. All the, all the, all, all the Mepharshim ask, so if Hashem was going to give Moshe Rabbeinu the Torah as a gift, why make him go 40 days learning and forgetting, learning and forgetting, learning and forgetting? You're going to give it to him as a gift anyway. Give it to him as a gift right from the start. Effort. Ah, oh, very good. So the al answers that a person has to do amelut. A person has to work on Torah. If you don't toil in Torah, you won't get anywhere. I will tell you, you have to remember, we have to remember that the Torah is a divine wisdom. It's from Shemaim. It's not man-made. The honest truth is, we should not even understand it. We shouldn't really understand it. It's not human knowledge. It's a divine knowledge. Yeah. Now, Hashem made it possible for us to understand. And Hashem makes it possible for us to understand if we put effort into it. And if you forget every time you learn, that's fine. Because eventually Hashem is going to give you. With every effort, Hashem will provide for you. Now, uh, there's a, the Gemara tells us, the Gemara tells us that when a child, right, the embryo is in the mother's womb, he learns all the Torah. A malach comes and teaches him all the Torah. Gemara nida. The Malach comes and teaches all the Torah When the baby is born They strike it on the mouth And people say that's the indent over here So they say they strike it on the mouth And it forgets all the Torah So what's the point? Why, why teaching the child all the Torah The baby all the Torah And then he forgets it? So the Eitz Yosef answers You know why? Because once the Torah has been stamped On the soul of the child He already learned all the Torah Throughout the rest of his life, his job is just to remember it. You already learned it. So it's easier for you to relearn something you already learned. Because otherwise, you can't learn Torah. You have to have a malach give it to you when you're a baby, and then you understand it again. The person says, what's the point? I'm learning Torah, and I'm forgetting it. I'm learning Torah, I'm forgetting it. I don't see any Sati de Shemaya. I don't see any extra help. Or Hashem not giving me Matana the Torah. I'm still, how many years I'm learning, I'm forgetting. The Midrash Shira Shirim tells us there was two workers, one a fool and the other a wise man. They were approached by a man that requested them to pour water from a flask into a wicker basket. A basket made out of uh, like palm leaves, right? So the fool said, no, I'm not going to do it. What's the point of pouring water into a wicker basket? Everything's going to fall right out. There's holes everywhere. What's the point? The wise man took it and did it. The man, and he said as follows, this man who's hiring us, He's paying us for pouring the water into the basket. What's it my business if it stays in there or not? 
My job is to do my job, which is to pour the water into the basket. The Midrash is telling us, we have to pour Torah into our heads. Now, unfortunately, our heads are like wicker baskets. They come in, they come out. But that's not, that's not our business, whether we remember it or not. Our business is to learn it. We learn the Torah, whether we remember it, whether we forget it, we learn it. Our job is to learn it. Eventually, the more we learn, Kadosh Baruch Hu will give us Sati the Shemaya to help us remember it. You know, the um, the uh, the Rosh Hashiva of Chaim Berlin, Rav Yitzchak Hutner, says Chasidik LeBracha. A Talmud wrote to him. A student once wrote to him, saying that he's having a lot of trouble learning. That whatever he's learning, he doesn't remember it. It's very difficult for him to learn. Very difficult for him to understand. For him to comprehend, and he feels like giving up. And Yitzhak Hutner Zechazilke Baracha wrote back to him. And he said to him as follows. He said to him, My dear student, we have a mistaken understanding when we talk about our Chachamim. We think of our Chachamim a lot of times that they became, they, they were Chachamim, they were great people, Gedolim, from when they were babies. They came out of their mother's womb already and they were the greatest said they came on earth. But he says, everyone thinks the Havitz Chaim was the best at keeping his mouth from saying Hashan Hara. But he says, who knows how many battles the Havitz Chaim had till he became to the level that he was. He says, everybody has a Yitzhah Hara Everybody has his challenges. And it's never that easy. They just, everything happens easily for somebody. And he says to him, the saying in English goes, lose a battle and win a war. Yes, you'll stumble. And you'll probably stumble again. And a person will fall. And fall again. It's the nature of the world. Right? The, the story goes that once the Hazon Ish, he was already an older man, and uh, he couldn't get out of his bed, and one of his students wanted to come visit him. The Hazon Ish couldn't get up to answer the door, so he told him to go around, and the guy was trying to climb up on the porch, and he kept falling and not getting up. Finally, he did it. And he came upstairs, and the Hazon Ish said, by the way, you should know life is like that. That's exactly life. Life is, you're going to try, you're going to fall. You're going to try, you're going to fall. You try, you're going to fall. Eventually, you succeed. The person has to keep trying. If Yitzhak Hutner tells the student, he says to him, if, he said to him, if you sent the letter, if you t- sent me a letter that said you were doing good, I would have said I received a good letter. But now that you sent me a letter of the troubles and problems that you have to learn Torah, I tell you that I received a very good letter from, from you. Because you're showing me that your spirit is that you really want to continue in the Derech of Hashem. And to really learn the Torah of Hashem. Challenges is what makes a person. A person has to keep with the challenge and not give up. A person can't just say, ah, 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 I can't, I, I, I'm giving up, it's, it's, it's done for. There's no such thing. They, they say here a story that Rev. Hutner, the same Rev. Hutner, was once talking with Ar- Rev. Aaron Cutler. Rev. Aaron Cutler was the Rosh Hashiva of Lakewood, Mishmedesh Gavoa. And, um, they were talking about how once in Europe there was a man who uh, needed a shidduch. He was a Talmud Chacham, but he wasn't so smart. Yeah, a lot of other smart people, a lot of smart bochim. And it was hard for him to find a shidduch. Once he got a shidduch, the, the father of the girl didn't, didn't know if she should go through with it or not. So he went to the Rav of Brisk, of Yeshua of Diskin, and he asked him what to do. And Rav Diskin told him, go ahead with the Shidduch. This man is trying to learn Torah. I guarantee you, he's trying, he'll succeed. And he did. He became a Sadiq, Rav Yosef Zundu, the Rav, in one of the cities in Europe. He wrote Svarim on the Shulchan Aruch. Poor mind, wasn't able to think so good, but he continued to work on it. They say that 
when Rav Hutner finished this story, Rav Aaron Kotler ran out of the room. So that helps for the more modern schools that the kids have to And he didn't, he didn't come back. And Rav Hutner was waiting for him. So Huna went out to look for him and he found Rav Aaron. And he found Rav Aaron crying. He found Rav Aaron Cutler crying. He asked, What happened? Rav Aaron Cutler said, You don't understand. I never had the chance to struggle. I was born with a very strong mind. And I feel bad that I never had the opportunity to work through a challenge. Because that's a big zakhut to work through a challenge, to go through it. Rav R- Pam, R- Pam would always say, he says that if you look around and you see a lot of times the Rabbanim, find out about the Rabbanim when they were children or when they were younger. And a lot of times you'll hear, we, um, we started a little early because I have to, uh, to leave. Uh, so, uh, we started at 8 o'clock. I said I sent you 8 o'clock. That's okay. Uh, take a little Nishma Nikadam Bat Osnat. So, Rav Pam would say, Rav Pam would say, to look around at the Chamim, Tamidim, that we have. It says a lot of them, when they were younger, they didn't have such a good head, they weren't behaving, they were acting out, they did the wrong things, ah, everything. and then, they continued to try, people had belief in them, and they continued to try and try and try, and they worked through their challenges, and they got to the point where they are today. Because a challenge is the opportunity to succeed. Yeah, there's, a, uh, there's a famous story that I say over a lot of times, that there was this uh, boy that he uh, got a caterpillar as a, as a pet. His parents got him a caterpillar. And uh, the caterpillar, after some time, you know, turns into a butterfly. So it makes a cocoon, right? And it wraps itself around. And then eventually, it f- comes out and flies out into a butterfly. So this boy, one day he goes to school, he comes back, he sees this caterpillar is wrapped up. He says, Mommy, what happened? She says, oh, he's going to turn into a butterfly. So he's watching, watching, and watching. And finally he sees that the butterfly is trying to come out of the cocoon. And what does he do? He sees the butterfly struggling to get out of this tight cocoon. So he says, you know, I'm going to help the butterfly. He goes ahead, takes a scissor, and he cuts the cocoon. And there's a butterfly comes out, but it can't fly. He looks swollen and stuff. So the, the boy calls his mother, and the mother says, I don't know, let's wait overnight, let's see what happens. He goes to school, comes back, still the same thing. So this is a time before computers, before Googles, before whatever. So she calls the, the local university, they give her in touch with one of the professors. And she says, I don't know, a butterfly, a caterpillar hatched into a butterfly and it's not flying. She says, exactly what happened. So she does the detail. She's, then she mentions, my son took a scissor and helped to cut the cocoon. So the professor said, well, this is exactly why it's not flying. So what do you mean? He says, you see, when the butterfly struggles and challenges itself to get out of the cocoon, it literally puts the fluids in its bodies in the right place and that way, when it's done, the wings then can work because its muscles have developed. Whatever needs to happen to the cocoon happens while it's trying to come out of the cocoon. But your son helped the cocoon, right? Cut the cocoon for the caterpillar, for the butterfly. So the butterfly never worked on its muscles. The butterfly is never going to be able to fly. The challenges that we have is what helps us to fly, what helps us to succeed. A person has to take the challenges in pride. Taking them in stride. Work with them. What should have been? Every day, learn Torah. I forgot. Couldn't, couldn't figure it out. How are you going to figure out Hashem's Torah? What should have been? Couldn't figure it out. Hashem gave it to him as a matana. You try, you do, you work, you succeed. Eventually, you'll fly. That's why, that's why they say Abraham Avinu had 10 tests. Why Hashem had to test him 10, 10, 10 times? To make him fly. Every challenge developed him into a greater person to make the nation of Israel. Doesn't happen overnight. Doesn't just happen just like that. Challenges is what makes a person. You want to see a real person? You have to see it through challenges. Today, my wife was shopping, 
and uh, the, the, well, she says there was a Gaisha lady on the on in, in Cold Save they were they were they were, they were shopping, and she, one of the Gaisha ladies turned to her and said, "You know, this whole virus thing is a test of the person's faith. The test of a person's faith. Why? People who have faith in Hashem, faith in God, are able to be calm." Those who don't, they're going crazy. They're all panicking. Like we mentioned before. But the Heit Egel, same story. If you don't have faith in Hashem, you panic. You, then you try to figure out an answer. I'm going to have a quick solution. Right? That happens. The writer says it happens at home all the time. A person, if something happens, he gets all upset and confused. And he says, okay, from now on, we're going to do, and he makes a statement that's never going to work and no one's ever going to listen to. Doing a fix, quick fix solution like that never happens. Sometimes you have to make quick decisions in life. But it should be done with a clear mind. And not in confusion. I just want to end off by uh, by saying that um, the Torah tells us that when Hashem, when Moshe was with Hakadosh Baruch Hu, after the Hate Ego, Moshe tells Hashem, "Don't get upset at the Jews." Moshe Rabbeinu comes down to the Jews and he says, "You guys made a terrible sin." So, so, so he tells Hashem, "Don't get angry." He himself gets angry at the Jews. We see this also happen with Shaul and, Shlomo and Shmuel. Shmuel tells Shaul, go and kill all the Amalekim. Shaul doesn't do it. Right? Shmuel comes and tells Shaul, we made a big mistake. How can you do this, this and this? He gives him Musar. And then Shmuel turns to Akadosh Baruch Hu and he's davening all night. Please Hashem, forgive Shaul. You just screamed, you screamed at the guy. Gave him Musar, then he's telling Hashem. Rav Mordechai Druk teaches us a very important thing. That when it comes to Shemaim, when it comes to talking to Hashem, a person always has to look for the good in another Jew. We have to tell another Jew they're doing something wrong. We have to put them on the right path. To tell him you'll fix it up so every way you have to do it, the right way. When you come to Hashem, a person should never say, Oh, look at that guy. Oh, look at that bad Jew. Look at it. A person never supposed to say that. A person always has to look for the good part of the Jew. What's he doing good? What's he doing right? They say that uh, Rav Moshe Feinstein, he uh, put out a... Um, so in the 1960s, there was a lot of talk if could the Orthodox deal with the conservative and reform. And Moshe Feinstein said that no Orthodox rabbi was allowed to sit on the same board as conservative and reformed rabbis that has to do with religion. It's Asur. Right? Like the same way we're not allowed to walk into the conservative synagogue to go into their, where they pray or to a reform or conservative. You can't go in there. When it comes to... Uh, you can't be on the same board with them for religious matters. So one rabbi...